Lifebox, in collaboration with Smile Train, the World Federation of Societies for Anesthesiologists, as well as the South African Society of Anesthesiologists, are all convening for the 9th All Africa Anesthesia uh, Congress in Johannesburg. And leading global health stakeholders, including representatives of ministries of health, organizations, professional societies, as well as associations, hospitals, individuals, will sign an action letter that outlines specific actions in order to catalyze the widespread adoption of uh, catnography in low resource settings. Well, to tell us more about this Congress, we're very pleased to be joined by Dr. Elizabeth E. Gaga, who is the Director of Program Safety at uh, Smile Train. Doctor, great having you with us this afternoon. Welcome. So please elaborate on what exactly is capnography and can you describe or provide an example of a situation where capnography provided critical information that impacted patient outcomes. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be in Johannesburg and to talk about capnography, which is one of the things that I really like to talk about. I am Elizabeth Igaga from Smile Train, and I'm sure so many anesthesiologists and anesthesia providers have a story um, similar to the one that I am going to tell. For me, when I was still in the operating room, I had a two-year-old who came in for her tonsils to be removed. And when we put her to sleep, everything went well. Um, we handed the patient over to the surgeon and you know everything seemed to be going well until the pulse oximeter, which is a machine that tells us how much, how well you have, how much oxygen you have in your blood, started to beep indicating that it wasn't going well. Eventually what we noticed was when we put her to sleep, we put a breathing tube down her throat and that tube had been moved during the process of prepping her for surgery, but we hadn't noticed. So the thing that helped us recognize that that was happening was capnography. So the question was, what is capnography? Capnography is um, an essential monitoring tool that basically helps us make sure that a patient who's asleep is breathing and is getting the oxygen that they need during the period in which they are asleep. So this is in the operating theater but also in the ICUs. So um, with this little girl that I have just described, I took one look at the screen and I saw that there was no wave that no capnography wave indicating that the tube was in the wrong place and we were able to intervene really quickly. We had no problems after that. Her surgery was successful and she went home a very happy girl with her ice cream. Oh, that is a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Doctor. Maybe talk to us then about what are some of the educational gaps in capnography understanding, especially among uh, anesthesia trainees, and how can also training programs then address uh, these further in order to improve uh, clinical competency? And also maybe take us through if there's maybe new grounds that has been broken in terms of AI innovation uh, pertaining to medical devices as well. Right. Um, so I'm sure most of us know that anesthesia providers in Africa, but also in the low resource settings are a scarce resource. We've got two sets of anesthesia providers. They are physician anesthesia providers. Those are doctors who've gone back and done um, a master's degree in anesthesiology. And then you have anyone who's not a doctor, but has been certified to provide anesthetics. And we term those as the non-physician anesthesia providers. On the continent of Africa and in many low resource settings, the bulk of anesthetics provided are provided by non-physician anesthesia providers. In the training of these non-physician anesthesia providers particularly, there's not much emphasis on capnography, the basics and the background of why and, and you know, physiology associated with why capnography is important. And so it, it's a bit difficult to introduce a monitoring tool that has not been taught in the training um, in the training setting. So what we've tried to do is to incorporate some of those basics into the training programs and advocate for that. But now that we have a capnograph that Smile Train and Lifebox have come together to make sure that there is a low cost robust piece of equipment that ideally we can distribute to the rest of the low resource settings. What we are doing is going ahead to 
train people on how to use the capnograph, going back to the basics and saying, this is why breathing is important. This is what happens when you breathe in. This is what happens when you breathe out. And what does that mean for you when you're monitoring a patient who is asleep? So this has provided us with an opportunity to train them on the job, train them while they receive the piece of equipment so that they are ready to use it when they go to the operating room and make sure that they already have an idea of what to expect to see when things go wrong so that it's not the first time that they're seeing it when a crisis happens. Mm -hmm. So just to recap what I've said, the capnographs are being distributed with some training material that helps people understand what capnography is, why it's important, but also gives us opportunity to network with and be able to support the non-physician um, anesthesia providers in particular, but also serves as a refresher course for the physician anesthesia providers. Mm. In terms of AI. Yes, doctor. Yes, I was going to say in terms of AI, what we're trying to do, it's still very here and there. We're trying to figure out how to teach AI to understand what we are doing. And those efforts are ongoing. So perhaps at the next All Africa Anesthesia Congress, we might have a lot more to say about AI and capnography. Yes. And just to wrap up, Doctor, I mean, I started this interview with the news of this upcoming Congress. So what can uh, anesthesia professionals actually look forward to uh, for the All Africa Anesthesia Congress this year? What will some of the discussions on the agenda be and where can the general public go then uh, to get more information about it? So we have a big uh, press conference coming up tomorrow, the 16th of September at the Santon Convention Center at 1 to 2 p.m. South Africa time. This will be at the SASA, which is South Africa Association of Anesthesiologists and WFSA stand. What we're going to do is to sign that action letter that you referenced at the beginning of the, of the interview. And what we are asking is for WHO and the other industry players to realize that capnography is important. We're asking for it to be a must have on the international guidelines for safety, but we are also asking for governments and national health ministries of health to add this to its essential list of 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 equipment. The other thing that you can look for, so please come for the press conference. We're happy to have anyone and everyone who can support us in this course. The other thing is you will have an opportunity at the booth to actually touch, feel, and play with the capnograph that we are trying to roll out to the rest of the LMICs for this course. But also on Wednesday, the 18th of September, we will still be talking about capnography, we will be talking about how best to roll it out. And this will be on the 18th of September at 12.40 South Africa time. In terms of the rest of the public and where you can go to find this information, we've got the Smile Train website. We've got all social media platforms for so Smile Train, Lifebox, the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, and the South African Society of Anesthesiologists, as well as the All Africa Anesthesia Congress um, websites. Doctor, thank you so much uh, for that uh, great information there. That is Dr. Elizabeth Igagade, uh, Director at uh, Smile Trade.